Earth's ecosystem support an amazing diversity of species. Approximately 1.7 million species have been named and identified, and scientists are continuously discovering new species and quantifying the actual number of species inhibiting the Earth. Our diversity is not static. The diversity of our planet is constantly changing. New species evolve, while existing species fade away and become extinct. Geographic patterns of diversity relate to environmental conditions that have influenced the evolution of species diversity, as well as the ability of local environments to support a diverse community. Temporal changes in the local patterns of diversity reflect changes in the local distribution and abundance of species in response to changes in environmental conditions through time. Temporal changes are influenced by the immigration and emigration of species as geographic distributions respond to regional and global changes in the climate. The number of different types of species has been increasing. Data exist from fossil records that the number of species has increased almost continuously since the taxonomic group first appeared in the fossil record. Species richness of this taxonomic group has increased over the past 600 million years, which slightly decreases during the late Devonian and Permian periods. Distinct geographic patterns of species richness were observed in latitudinal regions. It is often disrupted by other variables relating to topography or climate. The number of terrestrial species decreases as one moves away from the equator toward the poles. Deviations from the general latitudinal gradient of species richness are also observed for certain taxonomic groups, particularly for groups that are associated with specific environments or resources such as vascular plants, mammals, birds, in the New World. Increasing species richness experience periods of decline. Extinction were not time evenly through Earth's history and happens through time. The early vascular plants, the rootless and leaflet silopsids, went extinct by the end of Devonian and were replaced by Teridophyta, which flourished during Carboniferous period and decreased in abundance by the early Triassic. During Permian period 225 million years ago, 90% of shallow water marine invertebrates disappeared. On the other hand, at the end of the Cretaceous period, 65 to 125 million years ago, dinosaur vanished. Great extinction of mammalian took place during Pleistocene, when woolly mammoth, giant deer, mastodon, giant sloth, and saber-toothed cat vanished from the earth. Cause of extinction event happened by the following events: asteroid striking Earth, interarctic oceanic circulation, climate change volcanic and mountain building activity. In addition, humans have caused more than 75% of extinction. Being spherical, the surface area of the planet for a given latitudinal band will decrease as you move from the equator to the poles. The circumference of the Earth is largest at the equator. It was hypothesized that most of the land surfaces of the Earth was tropical or subtropical during the tertiary, which could partly explain the greater diversity in the tropics today as an outcome of the historical evolutionary processes. Surface area of oceans is greatest in the tropical regions and is therefore positively correlated with observed pattern of species richness. There is a consistent pattern of latitudinal diversity within the Atlantic Ocean. There is a decline in species richness from the tropical to polar waters that was not correlated with estimates of area inhibited by the various taxa. The most easily interpreted hypothesis to account for global patterns of species diversity are those explicitly relating to the availability of environmental energy, specifically thermal energy, 
that are associated with environmental features such as climate and availability of essential resources which are known to directly influence basic plant and animal processes. In a study of the relationship between patterns of species richness and indices of available environmental energy for a number of vertebrate taxa, they found a positive relationship between potential evapotranspiration and regional patterns of species richness for mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians. Potential evapotranspiration is the amount of evaporation that would occur if sufficient water source were available and is an index of integrated thermal energy. Greater energy availability enables a greater biomass to be supported in an area. In turn, this enables more individual organisms to coexist and thus more species at abundances which enable them to maintain viable populations. This results in an increase in species richness with energy availability. The measures that include estimates of both available energy and precipitation have proven to be the best predictors of geographic patterns of plant species richness. Actual evapotranspiration is the flux of water from the terrestrial surface to the atmosphere through both evaporations and transpiration. It is a function of both the atmospheric demand of water brought about by the input of solar energy to the surface and supply of water from the precipitation. A significant relationship exists between measures of primary productivity and species richness at a continental and global scale. Geographic patterns of both terrestrial plants and animals are positively related to net primary productivity. This relationship indicates that environmental conditions are favorable for photosynthesis, and plant growth are capable of supporting great number of tree species. In addition, more productive environments give rise to an increase in plant diversity over evolutionary time. Latitudinal gradients of species richness for marine organisms are similar to terrestrial organisms. However, the latitudinal gradient of productivity observed in the ocean is reversed for terrestrial environments. Inverse relationship is observed between primary productivity and diversity for terrestrial environment. Seasonality influences latitudinal patterns of diversity rather than by the total productivity. Thus, negative correlation exists between species richness and elevation since it's confounded with altitude. High altitude communities generally occupy a smaller spatial area than lowland communities. For both terrestrial and marine environments, there is a consistent relationship between the direct flux of energy to the surface and pattern of the species. Ecosystem diversity deals with the variation in ecosystems within a geographical location and its overall impact on human existence and the environment. Ecosystem diversity is a type of biodiversity. It's the variation in the ecosystems found in a region or the variation in ecosystems over the whole planet. Local or alpha diversity is a diversity within a community or ecosystem. Local patterns of diversity is hindered by difficulties in defining community boundaries. These patterns are changed over time due to succession and are also influenced by environmental heterogeneity. Beta diversity is the variation in species composition among sites in a geographic area. Beta diversity and heterogeneity has a direct relationship since spatial differences in environmental restrict the distribution of species. Meanwhile, the total species diversity across all communities within a geographic area is called as gamma diversity. Changes in regional diversity also occur over geologic time scales. Gamma diversity varies through time as a function of seasonal migration.